Hello folks and good day, or should I say guten tag in German because this distribution is out of Germany. So I'm going to talk about Tuxedo OS 2. It's our latest release. Um, I believe they updated this either yesterday or the day before. And today's date is 9-27-23. TuxedoComputers.com 5.27.8 KDE Plasma uses a 6.2 series kernel. You can see my hardware. So I am filming in 1920 by 1080 and things look very large. I call it senior friendly. So you can see what my display is currently. 1920 by 1080 is what I'm filming in, no scaling. You can adjust your YouTube player accordingly. I always suggest that because a lot of folks don't realize their YouTube players default to 460. All right, with that said, um, I'm going to give you a quick tour of this inf uh, this system if you don't know anything about it I'm going to use DistroWatch for this and while I'm at opening up a web browser I'll show you a couple of tips okay so I am going to click and hold and go full screen and uh, talk about Tuxedo OS and I'll resize stuff on the fly I'm using a standard um, computer mouse with a scroll wheel on it it doesn't matter if it's hardwired or USB based but mine is USB based if you're curious about the model, it's a Logitech M585. It's fairly generic. So to Tuxedo OS, it doesn't indicate there's a change, but uh, trust me, I downloaded this yesterday. It's a brand new version. And they only offer one desktop, Plasma. So this distribution is out of Germany, as I pointed out earlier. It's Debian and Ubuntu based. It is listed as a beginner, so let me scroll this back up. I don't use the popularity factor at all on DistroWatch. So if you're not a subscriber, I encourage that you subscribe. I have lots of videos on my YouTube site, over 200. And more importantly, I am going to uh, just make mention of the fact you can find uh, the DistroWatch link in my About section. But again, I don't use the popularity factor. But I do like the layout. They describe the system give you a quick screenshot and more importantly give you also a link to their home page. So one more time, Tuxedo OS, Debian Ubuntu based out of Germany, KDE Plasma and again it's made for beginners. So with that said this video is all about new users. I'm going to treat this video like you're brand new to Linux and brand new to the KDE Plasma desktop. So welcome. So I'm um, right-clicking configure desktop wallpaper. Now I've added some of my own and then some of the themes. I have one theme installed also added wallpapers. Some themes do that and some themes not so much. But the standard wallpaper is actually this one. Okay, so currently I'm using that one. It's one of their defaults. Now what exactly am I doing here by doing this to the window? So let me give you that tip really quick and I'll continue on. Anytime you open up a file manager, a window, a web browser, anything that's got a box, you'll have the keys over here, the standard close, the maximize, minimize, and the shade. The shade is like a roll up. However, uh, take a look where that uh, mouse pointer is pointing to a line. So your pointer has to be right below that area to do what I'm about to do, which is click and hold and push it straight up. And then click and hold and pull it down. You can also double click. It doesn't matter if it's here or here when you do this, by the way. You notice I'm clicking no icons. So click and hold and pull up. Click and hold and pull down. You can also right click more actions and resize in most windows. All right, with that said, I'm going to continue. So you can pick your new wallpaper and then when you close the box, you just hit apply. Also the icons uh, sizes, if you place them on your desktop, are determined by this. And sometimes when you change themes, this will also alter. So you may want to come back and check that once in a while if you find your icons have enlarged or shrunk if you have them on your desktop. All right, so one thing to be aware of as a new user to a KDE Plasma desktop is there's a thing called KRunner running in the background at all times. It's guessing at what you're typing. So I'm going to type in Cal I was looking for KCalc. It's a calculator. The other thing too is if you're changing themes and the theme didn't change gracefully and then you lost the panel. 
and most people panic normally and turn off their computers and back on and then they reboot and log in to just to find out that the panel still hasn't returned it's just a, like a if you want to call it the wallpaper only just remember this just type in SCT open up system settings take the appearance and hit defaults select both boxes and hit apply I'll come back to themes a little bit later okay so we have also some toys we call widgets not everybody's cup of tea some people like them some people not so much if you're dealing with a widget you can pull them out to play with them and if you need them bigger right click hit edit mode and grab a hold of one of these resizer corners and pull them bigger uh, I'm not sure what how big they can go but they're this is plenty big so I'm gonna click out and this is fully functional I'm gonna right click and remove so right clicking on the panel itself some people call it the taskbar taskbar and panel is how this is referred to uh, in a lot of situations there's also widgets here where I click on this icon widgets here all right so we have again the add widgets we have the configure wallpaper and one more time filming in 1920 by 1080 no scaling and again I what I consider this is like for seniors it's very large and uh, this did come up in 4k mode as you can see on my particular monitor I I have um, the capability of doing 4k and it was scaled down to I think 200 percent and it was still big uh, anyways moving along so um, let's start with the menu then I'll walk across the panel we have the search bar here don't forget you have key runner running in the background under favorites uh, first I'll just talk about tux one is just a made-up name it's just, uh, the name of the user will be up here here Firefox web browser standard the tux control center is found here and also on your panel and I don't know too much about this uh, tool other than the fact I believe it's part of their ecosystem at Tuxedo OS. Okay, and I'm going to close that. Nonetheless, it is in the favorites. And then you have another toy called Tuxedo Web FI Creator. System Monitor Console. I actually installed your my simple screen recorder that I'm recording this video out of console. However, since this is a beginner's video, I'm really not going to cover that in this video. If you're curious, I have lots of other videos on my YouTube site. System settings, Dolphin is your file manager, and then Discover Software Center. I'll open that a little bit later. I'll skip uh, over all and go to Kate. Kate is a nice text editor. And then we have a four games in here. I'll come back to, uh, to uh, probably demo this as uh, putting icons on the panel and the desktop just as examples, because there's several ways of doing it. Graphics. You can also think about installing software through the Software Discover Center. Things like GIMP, you can do a search for it. It's like Photoshop. Okay, just one example. Maybe you want the Chromium web browser and some other web browsers. You may want to go into the Software Center and go take a look at that. Firefox web browser comes natively installed. And Thunderbird is an email client. Multimedia, again, I added simple screen through, through console or terminal, but you get the rest of these players. Well, this is actually a recorder. So, um, so LibreOffice comes installed, and it's 7.5. If you want the 7.6, which is the latest version, that will save in, like Microsoft Formats 2010, Office 365. Head on over to your Discover Center, and uh, look for LibreOffice and you'll find the 7.6 version in there. It's very simple to install. Okay. But LibreOffice is very nice and the, this version here will save all the way up to for Microsoft equivalent to 2007 Office 365 and below. And then of course the ODT and o ODT formats. LibreOffice is very nice also. Has a spell checker if you want a dictionary, head on over to the um, Discover Software Center. I'll give, give you one of them. Golden Dictionary is very nice. And uh, that also has all kinds of uh, bells and whistles on that dictionary. And the good thing about that dictionary is uh, 
it doesn't have a lot of ads being thrown in your face every two seconds, unlike some of the dictionaries online. Uh, system, got some shortcuts here. Info Center is one of them. ISO Image Writer, stuff like that. Tuxedo, Utilities, and a screenshot tool. Anytime you are playing and making changes to your system, you may want to use the screenshot tool. My favorite is actually window. There's a full screen mode, window and ring, and then you can do the rectangular or draw a box around something. Very nice tool. Got places, sleep, restart, shutdown, and log out. Anytime you change themes or mouse cursors like this yellow thing that I'm using, I would highly suggest you log in and out of your system. When you install something for the first time, a theme or a mouse cursor when you log out, give the system a couple seconds to put all that stuff together. It does take possibly five or 10 seconds and then it'll uh, give you the login screen. And then after that, it kind of goes a little bit more smoother in the future. But for themes, I also recommend in most cases restarting. And if the theme goes south on you, you don't have a panel or anything else. What did I say earlier? Type in SET because KeyRunner is always running in the background. And then you can do the appearance, restore the defaults. Okay. All right. So where did I leave off? Uh, I think I left off at places. So again, you can search for software. You can also use KeyRunner just by starting to type. So let's talk about a couple settings. I'll come back to appearance. So workspace behavior is set for double click. Sometimes themes will alter that back to sing, uh, single click. Just be aware of that. The other thing I would suggest is to type in the word spell and click this and make sure that the, if you want this automatic spell checker, if you want it, this is normally off. So click that and hit apply. So the apply button is down here. If you want to add some extra themes, then that's done in the appearance section. You get the breeze, the breeze dark, twilight, and then the tuxedo ones. I added the um, sweet, which added the sweet ambar blue at the same time. Get new global. Please read the disclaimer note. This is on all plasma desktops, not just uh, on tuxedo. Uh, basically, it, it's in a nutshell, it says everything is imperfect. But do the install. Wait until it finishes. It says installed on it and you may be prompted several times for a password. Just allow it to finish and then close it. Now, when you are changing themes, sometimes you'll get the single selection, sometimes you'll get the double selection and you hit apply. Just be aware of that some things, if you are using a theme and something goes wrong, you can always use KeyRunner to do your restore defaults. Just type in SET right on your screen. If you'd like, I'll give, give you a really quick look and then I'll change this back. Okay, that's what that looks like. Even the file manager, these are call candy icons. Just giving you a quick look, as one would say. I'll give you a different perspective also. Anyways, let's switch this back to um, what were we using? This, I think this one. I'm going to do both. Okay, now that I switched themes, unfortunately, my mouse cursor is also going to be altering from yellow to black, but that's fairly standard when you uh, don't log in and out of your system. I should be logging out. Okay, so I will um, resize that slightly. I could have used that other theme too. There was another one that had tuxedo on it. So I'm not sure which one is the default. It may be this one. Let's do that one and see what it looks like. That's a dark mode. Nah, that's fine though. We'll just stick with that for a while. Okay. But again, if I was really concerned, I would just type in SCD and then do this here and restart defaults. Okay. That was settings software. We can do the point and click, we can do the search, we can do the update, refresh here, it's the same thing as this icon right here. 
when you install your system, if you decide to install this, um, it will give you the same icon down here somewhere with a little dot on it. And when you click that icon on your panel, it just opens this up and it'll have your updates listed. So, um, sorry, I uh, skipped over that. This is 527.8. And this is where the software is coming from. Flathub.org is one place. A lot of Linux distributions use that. And then uh, the um, the other places. So again, this is uh, Debian Ubuntu based if I did not point to this earlier. Debian Ubuntu based, Tuxedo. Okay. Plasma add-ons, point and click. You're interested in something, click on that. Click the screenshot if they have it. Not everything has screenshots. And then do the install. And a lot of times, too, if you're really concerned about disk space, is to check this kind of stuff. Again, you can find your new version of LibreOffice 7.6 in here. Just type in Libre. You can also look for GIMP. That's like Photoshop. Pulling this straight down, pulling this straight up, resizing stuff on the fly. Now you can see that the mouse cursor is black because I switched themes a couple seconds ago. So again, I haven't logged in and out of my system yet. I should have done that, but again, I'm filming. So uh, what's another uh, thing for close? Uh, there's another command for it that you can perform is Alt and F4. If you're on a laptop, maybe function Alt F4. So the software center. Now let's talk about file manager. Same deal. Um, I have to be below this line here to perform all this stuff. If I'm at the top, I'm doing a resizer. So um, pointing my mouse cursor approximately in this region here, you can click and hold and pull it straight up. Click and hold and pull it straight down, or you can also double click. It doesn't matter wh where the surface area is, or you can do it the old fashioned way. Resizing the icons themselves can be done this way for ease of use. You can also hold down the control key and hit plus, plus, plus. Or minus minus you can also hold down your control key if you're using a standard USB based mouse or a standard wired mouse with a scroll wheel hold down the control key and scroll up if you scroll back and it doesn't respond let go of the control key click in here once click the control key down once let it go click it down and hold it the second time and then you'll be able to resize that comes in handy I'm gonna let go of the control key and I'm gonna double click in here holding down the control key now and scrolling backwards and scrolling forwards and somewhere in between. Once I get it to the size I want, I let go of the control key. Now I can scroll normally in this resized. Right click, add as wallpaper. All right, you can see that I added that wallpaper just by pulling that down for a second. So you can add your own wallpapers. Let me give you a couple of tips on documents like PDFs. I'll go full screen. Let's say you wanted to resize this in a hurry. You can scroll normally, but if you hold down the control key and you scroll, it'll resize the innards. And let go of the control key, click in here, and it'll refocus. You can certainly do it the old fashioned way. What's the zoom level on this document? Scrolling back to 12% and scrolling forward to 10,000. That's kind of ridiculous for this document, but in either case, you can still use the arrow keys and page up and down. Closing this document, you can do a quit, which is Control Q. You can also hit the X in the corner, or you can also use Alt and F4. Alt and F4 it is. Standard text document. It doesn't have an extension, as you noticed. This is Kate, the text editor. I like Kate for a lot of reasons. But more importantly, I, it can also allow me to resize the text on the fly. What exactly am I doing here? The exact same thing I've been talking about. Holding down my control key, scrolling forward and back to resize this on the fly and then close. You noticed it didn't prompt me for anything because I didn't change the font. If if I were to make a, made a change, like I'll just add something like I'm one, then it'll prompt me for a change. I'm going to do a discard. Okay. You also have hidden files and folders, not that you need to know that, but in case you accidentally turn it on, it'll look like that. 
Anything with a dot in front of it is a hidden something. So these are obviously folders. Another name in Linux is directories. And that would be a file. The dot bash history just stands for born again shell. It, those are the those commands that I punched into console, which again, I'm not going to talk about. But this is how I actually installed simple screen was to open up console and perform a command. And that command is listed in this history. Dot icons is where these mouse pointers are stored. Sweet and radioactive are the only ones that I installed with this theme. Control H. Pulling it down, pulling it up, double clicking, double clicking. This way, this way, right click, more actions, resize. You get the idea? And then pull and hold. I'm going to click and hold to move the box around. A couple of tips for putting icons on your desktop and panel. Let's use games for this example. So I can right click on that K patients card game, add to the desktop, add to the panel as a widget, not my favorite, and pin to taskbar. Now what's the difference between the panel and the desk taskbar? They are the same. It's this bar down here. So I'm gonna first do add to desktop, and the icon is behind this window currently, and I'm gonna click and drag this over, and I'm gonna choose widget first to show you that because I have two choices. I could do the link or the widget icon. I'm going to do the widget and I'm going to click out. Here's that other one that I right clicked earlier when I did this. Add to desktop. So these are currently different. Let me change the wallpaper, if you don't mind, to something like that. That way you can clearly see this. And if I needed this bigger, it will not resize this because this is a widget. So I will go to configure icons and make this jumbo. And this will be blown off the screen in a second. It's actually downstairs. I can just scroll to go find it. There it is. And then I'm going to move it up in this area here. And then let you see the difference in sizes. Uh, this is ridiculously large, so I'm going to right click and scale that back just a little bit if you don't mind. We'll go with that size. I think that's probably plenty big. Uh, maybe the next one up. All right, how about somewhere in between here? All right, in either case, I'm moving this around. Now my settings currently for behavior is set for double click. Just wanted to clarify this. So that would mean that if I single click, I can drag it around single click. I would need to double click to activate it, right? This is a widget. It means I, I can click on it and it opens. That's the big difference right in here. The other difference is you notice how small it is. If I right click, I have three options. If I right click this one, I have more than three options. Because again, this is a link and it's denoted by that symbol. This is a widget. So to, to resize a widget, requires me to go to edit, edit mode and then I can uh, grab a hold of the ear and blow it up that way. Make sense? Okay. This is not movable. I have to literally hit the enter mode for me to move it around. Okay, so that normally this is not my preferred if I'm dealing with something I pulled out of the menu. Single click double click big difference right click remove icon close right click move to trash all right so you saw the idea now i am going to still drag the same and drop it here but i'm going to choose link instead of widget this time now that's the same thing as me right clicking added to the desktop this is not treated the same way this is still not double click it would be the same thing as me to um, right click and add to desktop. That's identical. Drag it here. I'll do the mines. Drag it here and do link here. Hopefully that was clear. All right, now I'm going to get rid of both of them. You can see the link symbols on both of them. Trash, trash. 
and let's talk about the panel. So you have the same card game. I have add to panel as a widget and pin to task manager. Let me show you the difference. I'll do this one first and click out and let's just see that I'm going to try to click and move it. I'm going to try to click and move it. Nothing happens. I can open it. Yes. And then I, I'm going to right click on it and I don't see unpin. I see enter mode and add widgets and properties. This icon here, I can unpin. This icon, I can pretty much unpin. It's at the bottom because it's a file manager. And I can also unpin this one and unpin this one, but not this one. This is a widget, not my preferred. I'm going to hit enter mode. It's the same thing as me middle clicking that and putting it in enter mode. But I'm going to point to this and hit remove and wait till it disappears. Then I'm going to close this box and close that box. Now I'll do the other one. Right click pin to task manager. It goes down in the same area, of course, the panel, but I can click and move this now to rearrange the furniture. You get the idea. So if I don't like it over there, I can move it over here, click and hold, move it over there. Then I can right click and unpin it if I don't want it. These are single clicks also, by the way. All of these are. So that's the difference. So again, when you're doing your icons, you can certainly right click on them, add to desktop, add to the panel as a widget, not my favorite, pin to tax manager. You can also drag this icon on the desktop and you can also drag these down on your panel. It jumps in front of this because this is an open program or application. I can still click and move this. Okay, so if I wanted the card game here, let's do this again. I could drag it down there, but it's just going to jump around over to here. That's okay. I can click out, click and drag and put it right next to it. Either side, doesn't matter. Right click, unpin, right click, unpin. Okay, file manager again, resizing text on the fly. Click in and out, click and pull up. Click and pull down, double click, double click. doesn't matter where. Does this work in the web browser? Absolutely, same thing. Pull straight down, pull straight up, double click, double click. I have to be right underneath there. That's another thing. With this mouse pointer, it's a little harder for me to see that line. So it's probably right around in that area there. Um, you can also, if you have a middle click button on your computer mouse, you can also, um, let me open, uh, let me resize this on the fly. What am I doing here? Holding down the control key while scrolling. I'm going to type in Google News just to give you the example here. Google News. So you can use this for whatever purpose you want. Um, resizing stuff on the fly, um, going full screen. Um, please don't read the articles. The news is bad enough as it is. Just focus in on what I'm doing. I'm going to be opening these articles on a tab, but I won't be leaving this page. It will be opening in the background, but you will see the tabs load. A middle click is a button underneath your scroll wheel on your computer mouse if you have one. Middle click, middle click. They're opening right now. I'll scroll a little bit farther down. Middle click, middle click. And a couple more. Now that I'm done reading all the articles and I want to now, I'm, I'm sorry, I went through all the articles. Now I'm going to start reading them. So if you are wanting to resize the actual tab, you can certainly do that. You, of course, get all the bells and whistles to go with it. Not now. Thank you very much with these articles. Holding down the control key, I'm going to scroll backwards to 30% and leave it there. Let go of the control key. Scroll this over there and scroll this up, holding down the control key. I'm scrolling to 400% and I'm going to let go of the control key and switch to that tab. It's still holding 30% and this one's 410. A lot of you more experienced users know how to do this. Now the middle click button can also be used to close tabs. So the surface area of this tab is quite large compared to the surface area of that. I'm going to middle click anywhere in this square, but I'm going to do this out of order. Middle click, middle click, 
middle click, middle click, middle click. And what happens when I middle click the last one? It's the same as hitting the X in the corner. It closes the web browser. All right. I'm at the 30th minute, so I'll say thank you for watching.